On August 28, 1955, Emmett Till, a black teenager who was kidnapped, tortured, mutilated, and deformed by a brutal beating which crushed his skull, gouged one of his eyes out, knocked out most of his teeth, shot in the head, dragged and then tied by the neck with barbed wire attached to a heavy metal fan blade by two white men and then finally thrown into the Tallahatchie River. Three days later, Till was discovered and retrieved from the river, his naked bloated body an unrecognizable face, only identifiable by a ring on his finger, would spark outrage when his mother, Mammy Till, held an open casket funeral for his son, saying she left his body in display for five days to let the world see what has happened. Thousands of people came to the church to see the evidence of this brutal hate crime. Two black publications, Jet Magazine and the Chicago Defender, published the powerfully graphic images of Till's corpse. Emmett Till's murder had become a source of outrage and indignation throughout much of the country and ignited a pivotal moment in the American civil rights movement. The woman whose accusation led to Till's murder now says she was lying, and according to a new book, the central thing that led to Till's murder may have never happened. Till was from Chicago, Illinois, visiting family in small town Money, Mississippi, when a story went around town that after he and a group of teenagers went to Brian's Grocery and Meat Market, it's alleged Till either whistled, catcalled, touched, flirted with, or otherwise spoke to Carolyn Bryant, a 21-year-old married white woman working in the store. Several nights later, Brian's husband, Roy, and his half-brother went armed with pistol, drove to the home young Emmett was staying in at around 2 a.m. in the morning and threatened to kill Till's family if they didn't turn over the quote, nigger who did the talking. Despite overwhelming evidence, the men were acquitted in less than an hour by all-white jury. They would later admit to a magazine they had killed Till. Two witnesses to the crime, Levy Two Tide Collins and Henry Lee Loggins, were black employees of Leslie Milam, J.W.'s brother, in whose shed Till was beaten. The two witnesses were jailed to keep them from testifying. However, Till's great uncle Moses Wright's testimony was considered remarkably courageous and a first in the state for a black man implicating the guilt of a white man in court. Mammy Till testified that she instructed her son to watch his manners in Mississippi and that should a situation ever come to him, he should get on his knees and ask forgiveness of a white person and he should do so without a thought. For six decades, Bryant has been the silent woman linked to one of the most notorious crimes in the nation's history. At trial, Carolyn Bryant delivered the most explosive testimony, claiming that Till had bragged about dating white women up north, grabbed and threatened her inside her husband's store, and asked her, how about a date, baby? Historian Timothy B. Tyson told the Associated Press on Saturday that after legally changing her name to Carolyn Dunham, she broke her silence in an interview with him in 2007-2008, his book, The Blood of Emmett Till, which comes out this week. That part's not true, she said in Tyson's book about Till's alleged verbal and physical advances. She told me that nothing the boy did could ever justify what happened to him said Tyson, a Duke University research scholar. This new narrative that is emerging generations after Till's murder is but the latest proof of the fact that the United States has, has failed to honestly address the sickness of its soul and still painfully struggles with issues of race and racism because we have not fully come to grips with the wrongs of America's past. He was lynched because he was visiting a bigoted town in an era where violence against black people were rarely treated as crime. And to ever tell his story in short or long form without saying that his murder was rooted in white supremacy against blacks is a lie in and of itself. A commemorative sign by the river where Till's body was found has been repeatedly vandalized, stolen, repeatedly riddled with bullet holes ever since it was posted, an easy target for angry people looking to lash out. The site that marked 
J.W. Milham, the killer of Emmett Till, remain intact, an obvious statement of America's perpetuated hatred. Now, you know, guys, we're approaching on Black History Month. And during this Black History Month, we have to look back at stories like this. And we have to look at ourselves in the presence and realize how far we've come and what we should.